no one's going to be squirting glycerin into their mouth in the midst of their workout. Uh, so what I would do is I first tried it a couple times, mixing it in. Alrighty, so hi everybody, I'm Damon, and today I want to talk to you guys about how to effectively leverage your glycerol consumption and how to better augment your training and performance with it. So this is initially just going to be prompted by the feedback that I got from one of my buddies. So I sent him the little sneak peek of the label for the non-stem pre-workout I've been working on for the past year. Uh, I'm going back and forward between a lot of the ingredients, making sure that the dosing is up to date with what I want to make sure I have into it. Everything, of course, being vegan. Um, but I'm going to be sharing with what I did in tandem with the first batch of it when it did have the three grams. Um, so in here, this is just like my little, uh, it's like a, a whole page. Uh, it's a, it's a, like six pages of just um, some general information on like some notes that I have for uh, non-stamps, obviously betaine, creatine, uh, five grams. That's actually been bumped up to 7.5 grams. I figure uh, since I had the video on relative dosing and some people are going to be more interested in that, bump it up to 7.5 and then have people titrate it back uh, depending on their needs. So the article of interest that I had initially where I decided just to go with like an industry standard amount was this where it is an article that talks about the physiological performances of glycerol and hyperhydration and rehydration and in their chart they give a lot of information about the glycerol pre-exercise uh, hyperhydration as well as glycerol hydration and post-exercise and general recommendations that they utilize for it. Um, and you can see here a dose of 1.2 grams per kilogram of body weight with so a volume of fluid equal to 26 milliliters per kilogram of body weight. So uh, I went ahead and I said, okay, well, let me just go ahead and standardize this for like 180 pounds, dude. That's like most normal gym going guys i mean a lot of people are bodybuilders obviously and they're huge so this isn't going to be good but this is a relatively standard weight for i feel like most guys so 180 pound man at um you know still sufficiently difficult to reach the saturation point for them so you can see here that the um 450 uh 354 milliliters of water going into 12 ounces of water is pretty good uh but then 1.2 grams per kilogram is going to be way too much so uh yeah if you see that you have <laughs> essentially 1.2 grams per kilograms of body weight that is well over what people are going to get from a, a stimulant or non-stim or even an exogenous supplement of glycerol for the performance enhancing benefits that are to be of note in terms of athletic performance outside of just getting a sufficiently decent pump so um, for the performance enhancing benefits, you would need upwards of over 100 grams of glycerol if you're an individual who is 180 pounds. And obviously, if you weigh more, you need more. And that scales up, including the amount of water that you drink pre-hydration as well. So if you're planning on putting this into your shaker, how do you do that? And my solution to this was to actually get glycerol and glycerin. Uh, and if you don't know, uh, I went through glycerol as a... Um, purified laboratory certified yada 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 like the whole nine yards as well as just vegetable glycerin now glycerin and uh glycin or glycerin or with an e or without the e is going to be glycerol that is a little bit less glycerol per solution it's like 95 percent or something so yeah it is uh 99.7 glycerol 0.3 percent water uh, and that just makes it a little bit cheaper and then you can just have it as a food safe yada 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 so one thing i noted when i put this in there was that uh first off it's incredibly thick and viscous not only is it incredibly thick and viscous it will form clumps in any powdered pre-workout that you take you essentially have to do big spoonfuls of glycerin inside of uh, your workout window or just before. No one's going to be squirting glycerin into their mouth in the midst of their workout. Uh, so what I would do is I first tried it a couple times mixing it into my pre-workout with a bigger bottle. I didn't use the 12 ounce blender bottle. I used a 20 ounce uh, shaker. Um, it actually got a lot of the stuff stuck to the little shaker ball into it. So then I started like manually stirring it and I noticed it was kind of like a molasses consistency. So I wasn't a very big fan of it there and then. Um, and then on top of that, what I noticed was that 
the clumps that would be in the actual glycerin were just disgusting like the the pre-workout was good i went through like three different flavors um and i ended up deciding on the sour watermelon but like even like the the uh strawberry flavor was just like it it would it would clump and then it would stay in the back of your throat and i like strawberry i don't like strawberry being that potent and in, in my mouth for that long um so that's something that i decided okay well if i'm gonna do the glycerin uh i'm gonna do like five tablespoons of it pre-workout and then I'll have my drink and then I'll have my pre-workout when I get in the gym I'll make sure that I am sufficiently hydrated for the utility behind it um, and I'd done a few different sort of like experiments I did just the non-stim for three days and I noticed I was getting a bigger pump I was a lot fuller um, and things were getting a lot easier in terms of like weight training now obviously there's synthetic androgen use as well as other anabolic agents as well as some peptides being utilized during that time frame so you know i can't definitively say that's what made the difference however i can note that when i did the tablespoons of glycerol or glycerin that it made a big difference on how much water i was holding my face was a lot more bloated uh, my muscles were a lot fuller and overall like i was just genuinely more bloated and i felt more full and i didn't really one i didn't have much of a hunger and i also didn't really feel the need f to drink a lot of water and i would just manually make myself drink water when i was going from the bench to the water fountain just getting my steps in to use that as my rest break but you don't really get uh very like dehydrated in the sense that if you take your glycerol um, and you utilize it effectively in terms of uh, making sure that you're hyper hydrated as well as sufficiently hydrated in the middle of your workout you're going to see a much better result and that's essentially why i feel that you know the differences in moving back from two upwards of maybe even like five grams of glycerol or you know whether it be like glycer pump or hydromax or uh just the generic like glycerol monosterate the difference is well okay well, glycerol monosterate versus uh glycer sizing glycer pump are way different like they're standardized to a much different concentration but all else held constant the amount of glycerol that you need for a sufficient a level of attenuation to your workout program and your overall athletic performance is much higher than what is going to be put in actual supplementation and if you're somebody who doesn't want to have like the thick soupy viscous uh, uh more plates more dates derek he does have through grill of mine that glycerol monosterate which is just literally <laughs> dried glycerol that you can put into water and you can utilize that and it's like one scoop is uh like 10 or 11 grams and it has 100 servings so you could effectively utilize like five to ten well i would personally if you were using glycerol monosterate titrate your usage up from two scoops all the way up uh you know another two scoops like three days later another two scoops three days later to effectively find what point you can reach where you reach an acceptable level of saturation and you find is most comfortable for you as well as providing you with some amount of benefits in tandem with the reduction of things like bloating and feeling lethargic and sick from its uh, induction i think that that is incredibly important to point out that <laughs> feeling gross and bloated can really take away from your drive to a significant degree uh in insofar that you're doing everything else well if that's a right limiting step it's just not worth it in my opinion so yeah they have a glycerol dose of 1.2 grams per kilograms of body weight with a fluid volume equal of 26 milliliters per kilogram of body weight so again if you're a 180 pound dude uh, i worked it out to be just under 12 ounces um Honestly, though, I would say that if you are utilizing the glycerol dose, just drink like two to three glasses of water in tandem with its uh, use. And then I would say that this is still a sufficient dose. If this is too much for you, you could potentially titrate it back to like 0 0.9 or just about one gram per kilogram of body weight. So, so it says a pre-exercise hyperhydration has taken place, then consume 0 0.125 grams per kilograms of body weight of glycerol and a, a solution of five milligrams per that. And when the exercise is sufficient to dehydrate yourself under 2% uh, of your body weight. So again, 
if you are someone who has utilized this hyperhydration and you're doing endurance training, it's important to note that if you have a glycerol solution, like let's say for example, you're using the um, glycerol from uh, Grillamide again, just because I like Derek, I love all this content. We'll just use his for example. So if you're doing a 0 0.125 grams per kilograms of body weight in glycerol, let's assume you're a 220 pound guy, just to make the conversions easy. So then you would have uh, 0 0.125 grams per 100, um, uh, kilograms right so the body weight equivalent of that is going to be actually you know i can just pull up a calculator because you know what i am doing this all off the top of my head and even though it seems relatively easy i don't want to misspeak on it so we'll do this we'll do 0 0.125 times 100 uh yeah so you have um, so you need 12.5 grams of glycerol in 500 milliliters of water which is very easily achievable you could literally just take like um one in like a fifth of a scoop uh, or just one heaping scoop of the um you know the gorilla mines version of the glycerol and you can put that into your shaker and if you've done your pre-exercise hyperhydration and you know that you're going to be exercising doing endurance training or in a hot climate that could be sufficient for hyperhydration now one thing to note too when you're doing anything that is going to require extensive hyperhydration it is incredibly important to make sure that you have a sufficient amount of electrolytes and you don't want to get cramping you don't want to have any other sorts of very um adverse effects in terms of like cramping um, and i was very fortunate in the fact that i thought ahead of this and in blood freak i made sure that i had a relatively decent profile of um, vitamins and minerals and electrolytes uh, i've scaled back some of the vitamins and minerals that are just kind of excessive that people are going to have in their multivitamins but at the time i was very cognizant of that um, i have things like potassium i have things like calcium and magnesium in it as well um, and I didn't have any notice that for your concern because I'm very cognizant of that. But if you're an individual who just takes a multivitamin or doesn't even take a multivitamin and you just kind of rely on your food for your supplementation practices, make sure that your exogenous supplementation practices are going to help subvert any of the problems that could arise as a result of your utility of glycerol and hyperhydration to make sure that that is not going to be a rate limiting step for your production and force output. Uh, Charlie horses are not good and uh, when you are sweating a lot and you are rehydrating you need to make sure that you have a sufficient amount of electrolytes um, there is a lot of stuff that you can do and obviously everyone's sweat map is a little bit different so each individual is going to have a different loss of electrolytes but very good general rule of thumb is to make sure that you're just taking you know maybe like 300 of magnesium and maybe like another 300 of calcium uh, obviously there's going to be complex uh, mineral interactions between each individual and their total input so if you have things like vitamin d if you have things like dim that's gonna have a different amount on your impacts of calcium you don't have um, hypercalcemia uh, as well as the interactions between things like uh, potassium and magnesium and calcium with things like sodium as well um, so it does get very complex on how you're going to utilize that and make sure that you are getting a sufficient amount of each but a very good general rule of thumb is just you know maybe you could suspend it in something like a sugar-free Powerade or something or Gatorade and I know it's not a very great source of electrolytes but it's just something to keep you cognizant of the fact that afterwards you might find it to be sufficiently important to either eat something that is rich in electrolytes um, I know that some people uh, will gloss over the fact that potatoes are actually a very good source of potassium and you know some people will get like uh, baked potatoes they'll salt it and if you use a salt substitute that will typically have potassium chloride as opposed to sodium chloride and if you're eating a potato for the potassium then you might not need to use a salt substitute you may find that it is more beneficial to actually use a sodium chloride or just general table salt and we're not trying to be like Jimmy neutron here but uh in tandem with things like calcium obviously fortified soy milk will have a source of calcium as well as people who do decide to consume dairy milk will note that they will have calcium sources from that as well and then when it comes to things like magnesium um i mean it's it's pretty abundantly apparent in a lot of other foods as well as supplementation practices so getting a sufficient amount could be gotten through a lot of those means so i think that, that is something that we should at least include into the conversation about this uh general but again uh when you're doing the pre-exercise hyperhydration making sure that you have a sufficient amount of electrolytes is just important in general and then when you're doing the rehydration i feel like that is also an important time to be more cognizant of the electrolytes because if you are planning to have a sufficient amount of exercise to elicit a total body water loss of over two percent then i think that it would probably be the best bet to either have the supplementation on hand or to suspend your glycerol solution into something that does have the sufficient amount of um, supplementation in place so maybe again um, not like a pedialyte but maybe if you do prefer pedialyte if you're vegan you can't utilize pedialyte due to some of the uh, 
animal byproducts that are actually in Pedialyte, unfortunately, but um, there are a lot of hydration packs and like a lot of those little powders that you can utilize to get a little bit more in terms of your hydration status. So yeah, that's something to think about too. And then they talk about glycerol rehydration for post-exercise. And again, that does come with a one gram per kilogram of body weight and 1.5 liters of fluid to be consumed when a subsequent bout of energy or exercise will be undertaken within a few hours. So this will provide similar glycerol doses with fluid volumes, those used in hyperhydration. There's a long duration of exercise, then rehydrate with water and meals following the pre-exercise hyperhydration recommendations before the next exercise selection. And then using before training, uh, try using glycerol in training before attempting using during a competition. So Side effects are encountered, discontinue use, or try to personalize the above recommendation by consuming a small dose of glycerol. So it says right here, like, if you're going to be utilizing glycerol, make sure that if you're using it for competition to get some sort of performance enhancing benefit, that you've actually utilized it and you know what a comfortable dose is for you. And they even note that in the side effects, you know, discontinue the use or instead of using a generalized output and formula like this one, to titrate it back or to increase it accordingly to your demand and your height and your total introduction to your training protocols with it and I think that it is incredibly important to not just generalize this because again every single individual is different if you're somebody who's utilizing this for a pump arguably it's going to be much more apparent in terms of water retention however if you have a sufficiently good uh, pre-workout that has a lot of intracellular osmolites as well as something that is going to give you those quote-unquote water muscles like creatine the dose gradient for this isn't necessarily super important um, I feel like the standard amount of glycerol that you're getting is good enough to elicit a good pump um, and if you are somebody who wants to really maximize it, then again, things like mono monosterate would be particularly good during an intro workout if you have a longer workout. If you're somebody who's utilizing this for like 45 minutes in the gym to maybe an hour, probably not the most important thing for you. Um, but if you are somebody who really wants to chase the most out of it, I would strongly recommend that you utilize the liquid solution of glycerol and utilizing that about an hour to 45 minutes before you get to the point where you're going to go to the gym. So maybe about an hour before the gym, that way you have a sufficient amount of hydration. You're not slamming everything back all at once and you give it time to digest and absorb and assimilate inside of your body. That's just my personal experience with it and that's what I would recommend based on how I utilized it and how I felt uh, during it. Again, don't mix this in with your powders. If you are getting the liquid solution, it's gonna be a clumpy fucking mess and it's gonna suck and it's gonna be unbearable to drink. It's kind of like you're eating a chalky smoothie like if you've ever if you've ever like gotten your protein powder into a shaker and you've put it in milk and then you just get like these random clumps because you didn't have like that little shaker ball in it it's essentially what it is but it's like ingrained in the water it's not even like chalky milk water or like chalky pre-workout water it's literally like this thick viscous water with clumps in it and it is just not a good experience so i would recommend personally utilizing the glycerol first and then your pre-workout powder and making sure that you have sufficient hydration before utilizing the glycerol while utilizing the glycerol and then while utilizing your pre-workout just to make sure that you are sufficiently hydrated so again you know drink your water take your glycerol with a either a liquid solution in tandem with drinking water so make sure you're having water throughout your day have your glycerol have a couple glasses of water if you're using the glycerol monosterate powder then i would say mix that in with a tall shaker bottle and have you know two of those or one dose per bottle and then put in the extra like a one and one fifth later for the hyperhydration during a long bout of exercise and then utilizing uh, your pre-workout with a sufficient amount of water to make sure that you're getting everything into as much as you can obviously fluid retention is going to be a noticeable concern that's where your pump comes from but uh, if you start to get things like swelling and edemia, uh, you know, that is going to be a bit more concerning. And uh, when you do consume an excess of water, you can start to get bloated just from having an insufficient amount of vitamins and minerals inside of your body. Um, typically, you can see that people who retain a lot of water on growth hormone will actually need to up their electrolyte intake. And that's due to the uh, interactions that the growth hormone will have with things like their calcium channels as well as potassium and other electrolytes and they note that in if you ever look at like serostim or any of the things like nortotropins prescribing information they talk about swelling and the 
tingles that you can get inside of your fingertips as well as the swelling in your ankles. So that's just something to uh, generally, if you have the issues with the growth hormone, uh, make sure that if you're getting the swelling that you are staying sufficiently hydrated as well as having a sufficient hydration status. I don't mean just drinking more water, I mean also having the appropriate amount of electrolytes for the amount of water that you have because if you didn't know, having too much water or too little water will lead to water retention. So. I think that is just about everything that I wanted to talk about today because now I'm rambling about growth hormone and the growth hormone electrolyte imbalances when this was supposed to be a video on glycerol. So again, I hope you guys have learned something today. I hope that you guys have had a good start to January. Uh, hopefully we can get things moving a little bit quicker in terms of getting more content out. Again, I am um, currently in the middle of moving, but for the most part, I feel like the project in and of itself isn't going to be too long. And then once we get settled in, there is going to be a lot more in terms of content where I am able to provide you guys with an insight to my day-to-day -day life, as well as my training style, as my training habits. Uh, I will be getting back into the gym and probably doing a upper lower uh, cardio slash rest day with flexibility training uh, and I'm still going to be keeping up with my um, language uh, learning as well as some of the other projects and experiments also in tandem with my gym training I will be taking you guys through uh, the next cycle that I do I will be detailing everything out as well as my vitamins my minerals uh, and then everything that I'm doing and as well as my sleeping practices as well as just like day-to-day -day life updates uh, for the time zone it is most apparent and it could have some sort of interaction between what i'm doing inside of the gym and training but i mean aside from that just general life updates so hope that you guys are all doing well if you guys have any comments questions or concerns feel free to leave me a comment if you're somebody who does want to publicly leave a comment on a youtube video that's perfectly fine you can send me an instagram dm my instagram handle is just at damon is vegan it's all one word say hey i saw your video on topic xyz just had a couple questions for you if you're somebody that doesn't also utilize social media as well as not wanting to put in your uh youtube channel comment down below you are more than welcome to go ahead and send me a question using the contact me form on my blog mindless easy it's just uh, go through the contact me form then you'll get one there you can also leave a comment on one of the blog posts me a question which i can email you directly or i can comment to you back there um so whichever preferred method that you have i would be more than happy to uh, talk to you about that but i think that's just about all i want to touch on today so until next time doodles